So I had to work yesterday and the sap ran, which I kind of thought it would, but I didn't anticipate it to run quite as much as it did. So I got out this morning and it's like 31 degrees, flirting, supposed to get colder. They were initially talking like one to three inches, but now maybe a dusting. But I want to get this sap hauled right now before it gets cold and my pump out lines freeze up, which I'm nervous about. I don't, they shouldn't, but I don't want to deal with ice. So Josh was bored, so he's here going for a ride. We'll haul some sap this morning and then I'll boil it tonight because I've got a bottle of that syrup that we made the night before last. I got a bottle of that this morning and we'll do a whole bunch of other things. So get some sap hauled here. So hopefully this pump out line is not froze. Um, we drained it out the other day, but where we're sitting kind of right at the freezing mark, I'm a little nervous this thing's froze. If it is, I brought the hammer and I'll just smash the ice out of it. All right, pump's off because we're cold, but let's see how much we got. It's, oh, it's dripping the pump out of the pump. It's just not warm enough. And there's, I don't know, 100 gallons in there. I just heated up the temperature side, sir, because I got looking at the pipe and the pipe looked like it was full of sap. Like, I'm not sure why it wasn't just in bypass mode. So now this thing is pumping a main line that's full right out. I may have to drop that temperature down a little bit to try and get this thing so it just runs a little bit longer at night. I set it to 0 0.2, 0 0.1, so it should make a difference, but this pipe was just full of sap. Not anymore. It's like 32 degrees here at the hill. This one's moving a little bit. The sap is damn good looking, but we're not gonna get much today, even though that pump's running. This is a pretty good tap here. There's probably, oh, 800 gallons sitting here. So I definitely won't get it all on on the load, but I'll get this truck loaded, then check the releaser real quick, and then come back for the next one. Then I'll clean the tank. Of course, there's only like 40, 50 gallons left in here. The toss up of, do you throw it on the ground or do you go back and then come get it? It's an easy answer. We mix syrup. You go home, you dump that load, and you come back, get this little bit because that could be a gallon of syrup. It's running a little bit. I mean, nothing to write home about, but vacuum's good. We're sitting at like 28 inches. Heat's on. That thing, I'll just clean it later this week while we're in this cold snap, but things are good here right now. It's coming in more than I expected for being 34 degrees, but I'll take every little bit we can get. Of course, I can't remember if I closed the valve on the drain for the tank, so we am gonna beat the sap down here. Nope, it was closed, but you just gotta make sure. Let's see what this stuff comes in at for a percentage. That's some pretty thin stuff, like 1.2, 1.3%. Oh well, it'll still make sure. You just squeeze it harder with the RR. For some reason, it looks like it was a party in here the other night. There's cans there. Cans all here, and then a bunch over there in a cooler that doesn't weigh as much as it used to. It's weird how that works. I think I've got enough room in here for the tank down back. So I'm gonna go down and start that, look at it. It should be, I think there's like 200 gallons in there, but I'm gonna come up anyways because I wanna test that sap. It should be sweeter than that 1.2%, hopefully. No, uh, not quite 200, probably 150 gallons in here. Um, this is really good looking sap too. So nothing's running, the releaser's froze up. Get this pumped off. 1.6, that's better than 1.3. 
So I've got that syrup that we made the other night and I've got a bottle of that, but I haven't used the water jacket canner in a while. So I gotta get that filled up. I had it drained off. Ooh, probably better make sure the valve's closed on the drain. Yeah, that's closed. Um, so I gotta fill it up and I just use a bucket and a pitcher because I don't have running water down here. It makes a little bit of a mess, but it is what it is. All right, I set the filter press up. I did put all the banks in. I didn't put a blocker plate in. And a lot of that is, I'm just not sure how dirty this syrup is. I don't think it's that bad, but I don't want to get partway through with only three frames going and have it go. Ugh. So I'll just run the whole thing this first time, see how we do. Um, it's not bad. I think there's like 12 gallons here. Um, guessing it's dense, so I'll have to put some flue pan into it and then run it up. Um, I am putting all this in glass, nothing in plastic, and it's just because I'm almost positive this is gonna grade golden and we've never made golden and I kinda wanna show it off. I did get one of the Leader H2O handy fillers. Um, not gonna try it today because I'm gonna fill bigger bottles, so it's not as big of a deal, but for the little ones, you know, the 50 ml leaves, 100 ml leaves, 100 milliliter glones, those type of things. This thing's gonna be the cat's mihau because I'm not gonna make a mess, which I generally make a bunch of a mess. So this thing should make it easy, but I'm not gonna try it today. But these things, I think they're gonna be pretty good. So I checked it for density. I'm at like 160 degrees and I was way too dense by about four points. So I went over, got to the flue pan, pulled some flue pan off it, poured that in, got me to where I'm right on density now, right where I want to be. So just got to heat this up, get it to about 190, run it through the filter press, and then we're ready. But this is set to density now. Water jacket's heating up. That's almost to temperature where I want to be. This is at 160, another 30 degrees, and we can get this stuff all. This is some pretty outstanding looking stuff. I'm pretty happy with this syrup. That's a pretty good looking stuff right there. So I just pulled a sample jar. And now we're gonna find out together if I made golden or not. So it's probably easier to go outside and we'll hold this thing up to the light and see. Not quite. Nope, I, that's an amber, but it's, it's damn close. That's the whitest syrup I've ever made. Syrup's bottled, put away, sugar house is pretty well put back together so that um, we can make syrup tonight. I just gotta play taxi, haul the girls to dance, come back, fire up the RO, get that um, squeezing down, then we'll light the fire about 5.30 in. Well, I don't know, we'll probably make eight, probably eight gallons tonight, so we'll see. All right, let's get this RO fired up. So I gotta get the sap coming into it. Coming in, the bleeder, then up here, I've got to put everything into concentrate. So my valves are into concentrate and I want to go, I want to recirculate. So that goes there because that goes out to the tank. Permeate is going out. Get this thing going. Oh, got a leak. Got a leak. I changed the pre-filters the other day and they're leaking a little bit. I'm 
making five gallons of concentrate a minute and 14 gallons of permeate. So we'll plow through this pretty quick. But like I said, I don't really pound on this thing. I could turn the pressure up and really clean it out, but not really, it's not worth it. The RO is chewing through the sap right now, I'm making about five and a half percent um, from like 1.3. But like I said, I don't stand on this thing. So it's just chewing through it. Permeate looks crimson blue like it should. I'm getting ready to flip the valve here in a minute and throw it up to the head tank. Now, my battery died the other night when I was trying to finish out the video during the, our first boil, and we kind of had an oops moment at the end. I calibrated the tank on the gauge so I knew when I had 15 gallons left, and at that point, we stopped putting wood in. Well, a few minutes later, I look over and we're at five gallons and we still had a lot of fire. So I started shoveling the fire out, and by the time we were done for the night, we got it cooled off in time. That wasn't a big deal. But it went all the way down to where it's not on the sight gauge. So the top of the flues is right there. And we're down right at the gauge. So we're going to leave more in the tank tonight to try. We just got to figure it out. It's, it's just a balance and act with this bubbler in here now. It's, it's just a different world trying to figure out how to run this thing. It, it's, it's really hopped the game up with this thing, especially when you've got the blower running like you should. All right, time to open these cupola doors up. The ropes I use to close it up, but um, I got to untie them and I got to preset where to put them. But now with the roof on here for the heat pump, this handle's way up there. I got to get an extension on it or grow longer arms. There's that door. And then this door. Head tank valve is in the right spot. So I'm gonna throw this valve and start putting sap up to the head tank. There, so we got sap. So now I do that just to make sure I'm putting it in the right spot. Now it'll fill the preheater first. That's already full and sap coming in. It won't take long and we'll get this thing cranking. It's time to light this thing. That's just from the bubbler. That's not even boiling yet. So it makes a huge difference. It does take the defoamer. Last night when we fired up, we didn't put any defoamer. We had to put some in in a hurry because it, it was foaming. But that's just the bubbler and this thing will make steam in no time now. Now that fire is going good, I'll kick the rest of the blower open. We're definitely making some steam now. John's here, he's tending the fire. He was a little upset that I was out of wood in here when he got here. He thinks I'm better than that, but I don't know, but now she's cranking. We'll be making syrup in no time. When we first fire up, it's not syrup yet, but I'll start drawing off a little bit early. I'll pull off a pint, wait a few minutes, pull off another pint, and do that a few times to try and get the, the flow going through that front pan. By doing this, I don't batch. Now, we still do batch a little bit, and that's just because of the size of the rig, the concentrate, all that. But this light syrup that I'm pulling off will go in the canner, and that'll blend off without any trouble because we end up drawing off heavy anyways. So. Tomorrow when I bottle this, I'll end up putting some flu pan into it anyways to thin the mix. So right now, pull off a little bit more. And 
you can see the temperature's rising on that because it's getting to be syrup in the center. So we're getting close. We'll be making syrup here in a minute. Like right now. That thing just batched pretty hard. It pretty well took a whole syrup pan off. And I've been fighting with this float here on the syrup pan that's been leaking by. So I choked it down some more, trying to get it to seal it off. And then by doing that, we were running short in the pan. So I came over, I slowed down my draw and I put some defoamer in. I slowed down my draw, came over, opened that float up, got some more sap coming in make sure our height was good in there and then open up finish the draw but it, this thing has become a handful now it the concentrate level and we're just we're making a ton of syrup in a hurry that thing hustles like half a tank of concentrate right now we're hustling through it and the raw sap tank is getting down there so this isn't going to take long and then this will be done and, and we'll be out of here in two hours tonight I gotta check my stack thermometer to see what we're running for a temperature. We're about right. It's not completely cherry red. So that's about where I wanna be. Just a little hint of red to the pipe. That's a little too warm now. We'll back her down. I've been chasing this temperature down the last 20 minutes and it. It's finally leveled off, but we're making syrup consistently and it's just, Things are rolling now, it's way easier. That's it, we just lost it. We were sitting here kind of fighting with it, like adding a little bit more wood because we didn't want to run out like we did early the other night. But... I'm testing my new cleaning system tonight. So right now I'm filling the flue pan with permeate and I've got the bubbler going. We're gonna see if, through the night, if that permeate will clean this pan. I took the syrup pan, drained that off, down into that draw off tank, and the syrup pan's full of permeate. This I'm not gonna bubble, this is just gonna sit there. My flue pan's down in this draw off tank down here, so we'll let it sit, and I'm just kinda filling, so it's, I wanna try and get it to splash up as much as it can and basically rinse everything off inside this flue pan. There's a variable speed rheostat 
on this blower motor and I've got it on the lowest setting and it's it's making that permeate move a lot so my hunch is is that it's this is gonna work pretty good I think it's it's cold permeate but like the syrup pan the, the temperature is still climbing because of the heat in the bricks normally I leave that door open just to try and get the heat out tonight I kind of want that heat to go into this pan and just work so the syrup pan I don't think is going to clean up as much as it's going to in that flue pan but I'm just going to let that flue pan ride and see what it does we made a oh I don't know, 10 gallons probably maybe 11 and this stuff just it, it's it's good but this place is ready to put to bed for the night um come down in the morning shut the bubbler off Drain that pan and see how it does. I think it's gonna work good. So, see you guys in the next one. That light service, that amber syrup we made last night, that stuff is delicious. This is last year's dark. Still damn good. But that amber, 